Okay guys, um, here is where I want to start this documentary. Uh, we're on our way to Africa right now. We're on our way to Namibia, actually. Um, I want to find out how my cousins and everybody are doing because I haven't seen them in a long time. So I think that's going to be very interesting uh, for my growth and uh, for this documentary to, to figure out a little bit how, how Africa is right now uh, because it's not the same Africa as I left it uh, over 20 years ago. Listen, let's start from, from, from the start, because I think it's, it's very important to put things in the context of back in the days, right? So, um, when I came to Sweden, Sweden was a different country, right? Different. It was a different society in a way that it was, uh, especially we black people were seen as, uh, we were a new thing in the country. You know, if you go back 30 years ago, there were places in Sweden where people had never seen a black person for real, right? And uh, there was a little bit still of that when I moved. Uh, I'm born 86, okay? So I, my generation of black dudes that moved to, to Sweden, we, uh, we clashed with a generation of guys that were completely different from the Swedish guys that you see today, okay. right? They've been raised a different way. Uh, uh, for instance, the prevalence of fighting was more uh, of aggressivity and confrontation. It was a thing in their generation. Yeah, it was a different culture. Mm -hmm. It was really like hockey, uh, punching people in the face in the weekend, and, and that, that was it, right? So that was kind of like the, the kind of, of generation that I clashed with when I came to the country. Wow. I said, just look everywhere, man. How long since you left her It was a long time ago. I haven't seen her maybe in 20 years, something like that. Close to 20 years. Is this Nampala? Yeah, this is a Lucas. No. Oh, this okay. one is coming to Mkatia uh, and then this one also. Mm. Uh, this one is Lucas. Ronata, where is Ronata? Ronata. In the Lucas, it's a name Ronata. We must call Ronata. Is, it, <laughs> is he here? Uh, uh, Ronald is my cousin. Um, I haven't met him in like the longest time, so we're gonna go and say hi to him right now, actually. How old are you? Eight. Eight years old. So you're going to school? So how is, what are you learning at school? Math? English? Yeah, and also Afrikaans. Afrikaans? You should learn uh, Swedish. Svenska? Pratar du svenska? That is, do you speak in, uh, Swedish? Is it far? No, it's no. Easy. Okay, okay. Say hi to my cousin. Oh my goodness. Wow. Oh my goodness. You are tall. You are tall. Oh my goodness. Come here, brother. Oh my goodness. Good to see you. Shit. You are tall. Yeah, I'm tall. Much taller than me? Yeah. No, 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 no. We're the same height. We're the same. We're the same height. Yeah. Oh so my goodness. Oh my good. I just came. We came yesterday. Something like that. We're going to give uh, Monique some cell phones and everything oh. uh, but two of them i think were stolen because they opened my bag in the, hey. uh, that's how it is <laughs> what is this <laughs> <laughs> it's kanye west it's kanye west man oh, yeah. it's kanye it's kanye he inspired me man he inspired me it was a long time man <laughs> so you just look like Nampala. no 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 i look like Nampala. <laughs> i don't look like Nampala. i'm way more handsome yeah? way more handsome man. this guy man Wearing Lacoste. Wow, check it out, man. Check out the view. Ah. 
So wait, is this also the, the, the same? Or is it somebody else's it's house? Somebody else's okay, okay. Oh, thank you very much. No, oh, it's fine, bro. God bless you, man. <laughs> God bless you. We're, we're family, bro. Yeah, I'm You coming. don't have to worry about it. <laughs> Soon you're coming to Sweden. Me? Once I become famous mm. and this becomes big, mm. I'll, I'll fly you out to Sweden. You're supposed to do that. I'll go play my soccer game. Are you that good at soccer? Not that good. Good. Good enough? Yeah. Good enough to play for the national. <laughs> Now I think I'm, I'm now better than you at football. Now I'm old. Imagine 29. But I can still play football. Yeah. Still. 29. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was supposed to start the way I'm maybe 16. Ah, I understand. Yeah. 16, then you, then you got the touch. It's because for them, black people is unknown. No, it doesn't belong to the culture. It, it's like something new. Something that they don't know. So it comes from the innocence. You, I don't know if, you know, the root, the root of the races is, and maybe it's not racist, it's just some kind of fear or yes. But once I think, and I have to, I'm thinking about because the young generations are not like that anymore, but I'm thinking about my grandfathers and everything. You know, once you get, and that's, you, once you get to know the individuals, they are just individuals, no matter what they are coming from, no matter. And I think in that I'm proud of my country that I've been in a lot of countries, but I think Spain is, is the less country, the less ra racist country I have in. Yeah, well, I never experienced it when I'm with you. No. And I've never experienced it when I'm with any other uh, black person either mm. but I have experienced it I've heard people say things when it's only white people in mm. the room uh, yeah. and people express opinions and you're kind of surprised that they have those opinions and it's mm. like uh, it gets very uncomfortable and yeah sometimes you want to stand up for what you believe in and uh, yeah. you're in a room full of people who who uh, may think otherwise it is a bit sketchy uh, so for that reason I like when I'm with Ashley and I meet a white person, like I never even know if this person is a racist or not. Mm. And it's actually kind of weird mm. because it puts me in a position where I, I'm kind of skeptical when we meet new people because I, I have to kind of fill them out and see what they're about before I trust them. It, because you never know who's a racist, like exactly. you literally don't. Exactly. And the thing, well, the thing with Sweden is that um, people don't think that racism exists in Sweden just because it's such a friendly country but there's a lot of racism happening behind people's back as you said when it's a room of white people that is when um, they um, express opinions yeah I wouldn't say totally violent but definitely a lot more aggressive than the guys now because when I see the, the youngsters of the same generation now it's mostly uh, they're more mild, right? I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, but it's very, very much less. It's a toned down version of what we, uh, we live through, right? So um, uh, it wasn't unusual for me, for instance, to be in the streets and just somebody calling, Opa, you know, through the, wind the windshield of their car. Right? Stuff like that happened all the time, you know? It, it's not like before open racism is something very rare nowadays. It's more somewhat insidious when it happens, but not open racism like that. And of course, in the context of sports, that was all the time, you know. You had the public calling you names, uh, you know, imitating apes when you're around, etc., telling you things, throwing things at you. It was all the time. Yeah, it was good times, man. it was good times. The ultimate dream would be to be able to make a living out of traveling and filming and photography. What is it you want to learn in Africa? Yeah, I want to travel. I, I don't know how much I'm going to learn. I'm just... I think I'm going to experience a lot of new stuff. You know, trying to figure out what I, what I want to do. So, uh, so my question is more like, uh, what, what do people say? Because we're not in this room, so we don't know... You know, we're excluded from the room, so we don't know what people are saying. Right. Yeah, so... Like it's, I've, I've never, uh, only on few occasions, but I, it's very rare that someone actually like says that they, they hate someone or anything like that. It's more just uh, ignorant things, such as uh, what you mentioned, 
and uh, mm. so on. And maybe people they, they'll crack jokes and stuff like that. But also just uh, skepticism towards uh, foreigners in general. Also, mm. uh, I think a lot of people they don't really know what to make of it, and uh, yeah, they might express themselves in a uh, in a not politically correct way. I guess you can say. Mm. Um, but I, I think there's no, for most people, there's no hate there. There's just like uh, misinformation and uh, a bit of ignorance, you know. It's my office. Now, of course, it's, it's a mess, but I'm uh, trying to organize everything. Everything's gotta go. I gotta pack all the computers and just. Uh, Try to take everything up to the attic. Let's see here. It sucks that the whole situation that's happening in the world right now, a lot of people are losing their jobs. I guess I'm one of those people. I remember my first day when I started. I was so nervous. I did not know if I was gonna be good at this job. Three years later, it's maybe one of the best jobs that I've had. It's a shame that they have to close this place down. Okay, I think I got everything out right now. I'm trying to make it as tidy as I can for the next person. So, what's the next chapter for you? It's a great question. I don't know. When I grew up in a place where I grew up, it's, I'm white. I look white. When I got tan, I don't get tan, I get pink. And so and I grew up in an island where everybody's so tan, everybody's so brown. And so everybody was laughing at me all the time because of my skin. Oh, white guy, the sun is free, man, the sun is free. <laughs> so yes, and I, yeah, I remember I, I, I had 10 years old and I cried. I cried coming back home. I once even put like this cream that makes you become tanner that come in the in the magazines. I took the, the cream of my mother magazine and it got worse, you know. I, I become a, a Dalmata, a, a, you know, I have like dirty, dirty things, dirty brown things in my body. It was horrible.